First, the USDA's Justice for All non-discriminatory statement, which simply states that all persons must be treated equally without regard to their race, color, national origin, sex, religious creed, disability, age, political beliefs, or reprisal or retaliation for prior civil rights activity, and that our institution provides an inclusive space for all. For more information on the And Justice for All statement, please visit the USDA's website. My name is Theo Banks. I'm a nutrition educator at Rutgers Cooperative Extension of Camden County through the Department of Family and Community Health Sciences. Today, I'm gonna to be making some personal pizzas. These are a quick, easy, tasty pizza recipe. Great for kids, great for feeding a whole family. And I will also be talking about properly storing fruits and vegetables. So, our ingredients for our personal pizzas today. For toppings, I went with a green bell pepper, mushrooms, and some onion as well. We have our tomato sauce right here, and to add some seasoning to the tomato sauce, I'm adding Italian seasoning. I've got some shredded part skim mozzarella cheese to go on top, and then um, I've got, the recipe calls for English muffins. These aren't quite English muffins, they're little skinny sandwich buns, um, but anything you have will do. I've even made this recipe with corn tortillas before. So really any type of flatbread will work really well for this recipe. So you can see my ingredients here. It is really simple. The instructions for this recipe, um, you might want to start out by lightly toasting whatever buns you're using, but don't overdo it because they're going to be cooking as well in the electric skillet. So the instructions in the original recipe show you how to prepare this recipe in the oven. But I wanted to show you an alternate way to prepare it. So I'm going to be preparing it in my electric skillet. You can easily make this recipe on your stovetop as well. All you need is a large flat pan and something with a lid. The lid is important because it's going to help us heat everything up and melt the cheese. So again, start out by lightly toasting whatever it is you're making your pizzas on. After that, you probably want to dice your veggies, grate your cheese, and then saute the veggies for five minutes on your stovetop or in your electric skillet, whatever you're using. And while those are sauteing, you um, can prepare your sauce. So I, again, I just have a can of tomato sauce and all I did was I added Italian seasoning directly to it. And after that, you may decide that you want to heat yours up. You can heat it up on the stovetop for a bit, but it's absolutely not necessary. It'll allow the sauce to absorb some of the flavor from the Italian seasoning better, but it is not required by any means. So you're sauteing, you potentially have your sauce heating up as well. Once all of that finishes, you can start preparing your pizzas. So, and I'm going to start my skillet while I'm preparing my pizzas. But, <clears throat> can start out by just spooning a tablespoon of sauce onto your buns. And then you can add whatever toppings you're using. I've got my mushrooms, my onions, and my bell peppers. And then you can sprinkle your mozzarella cheese right on top of that. Alright, so these are ready to go, and my pan should be mostly heated up by this point. So I'm going 
going to take these and I'm just going to plop them right in there. I've already seasoned this. There's some vegetable oil in there, but if you haven't done that, you would want to do that now. And then I'm just going to cover it and let it cook for, I'd say three to five minutes. Keep a close eye on it. You really just want to give everything an opportunity to heat up and melt the cheese on top of it. Nothing needs to cook properly. So keep an eye on it, but it should only take a couple of minutes on medium heat. And then once the cheese is melted, once these are ready to go, then we probably want to let them cool for about two minutes before serving. A couple of notes, I already said you can use any type of bread that you have, works well for this recipe. You can use any type of toppings as well. I like using seasonal veggies, things that are in season that I can find fresh. So you can try broccoli, you can try onion, you can try spinach, whatever you can get your hands on. Um, you can use leftover cooked meat, um, or you could put turkey pepperonis on top of here. I would just dice them into smaller size pieces. You can make your own tomato sauce. You could use jar tomato sauce from the store. Um, and my biggest note, my biggest tip is that you can make a big batch of the pizza sauce and turn this into multiple meals. The sauce will hold up in the refrigerator for a few days. And so you can make enough to last a few days and you can assemble the pizzas one night at a time. For example, if you're using this recipe to feed family or feed kids, um, you could even prepare everything in advance in terms of the toppings and the tomato sauce. And if they're old enough to work the stovetop or an electric skillet, you could task them with making their own personal pizzas. Maybe that can be their task for making their lunch for the day. Just something to keep in mind. This is a really simple recipe, great way to get the whole family involved in cooking. All right, so while this is cooking, figured we could talk for a few minutes about storing the fresh fruits and vegetables. We've talked a lot in our previous classes about all the benefits of fresh fruits and vegetables, but there are some things that you want to keep in mind so that you use them before they go bad and that they don't go to waste. So the first tip that I have is to buy fresh. So buy the freshest products you can find. So you can look through them, you can survey them, try and find things that look crisp, um, and bright, if you're getting leafy greens, try and avoid ones that have started turning yellow or brown or have majorly wilted. So once you've picked out your produce and you've brought it home, you want to store it in the refrigerator, especially things like lettuce and salad greens. Um, those, you want to keep um, them dry in a plastic bag um, so that they don't pick up too much moisture. If you're getting greens with the stems on them, so for example, kale and collards, one thing that can keep them fresh for longer, um, one thing to keep them fresh for longer is to chop off the ends of the stems, just the very end of them. And then you can wrap them in a paper towel and put them in a plastic bag. And this is the same principle as when you buy fresh cut flowers like roses and you cut the stems off at the end. Doing that allows them to absorb some moisture and allows them to stay fresh longer. So that can be really helpful. I do this with my herbs as well. I cut the ends of the stems off of them, things like cilantro, and it helps them stay fresh longer. One thing with herbs though um, is that you would not want to rinse those. Um, usually they're too delicate to be um, rinsed heavily underneath the sink. But herbs, you can wrap them in a slightly damp paper towel and again, store them in your fridge. And then before you cook, before you enjoy your fresh produce, obviously you wanna wash it. Um, for greens in particular, you can place them in a bowl, you can cover them with water, and then afterwards you can shake them um, under the water to loosen up any dirt. Um, and that can help remove any dirt if these are super fresh greens that you have. Um, and you can repeat that as many times as necessary. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was freezing fresh produce, but let me check on my pizzas before we do. They are looking pretty good. The cheese has melted. I've turned the burner off 
and we can serve those in a minute, but they look good. So freezing fresh produce. Sometimes you buy too much produce, and one thing you can do to avoid um, it spoiling and going to waste is freezing some of it. So you can purchase things when they are in season, when they're most affordable and when they're freshest. And if you have anything left over, you can always freeze them for later. It's a great way to reduce waste and to stock up and prepare for future meals. And plus, um, frozen produce that you've frozen yourself, you know, you don't have to worry about there being any additives like sugar and salt and other preservatives in there as well. So different produce requires different steps for uh, freezing them. So we're gonna go through three methods and talk about what adapts best to what method. The first method is just putting things in the freezer. So fruits and vegetables that when they're raw and fresh can go straight into the freezer. This method is best for things like berries and grapes and certain squashes as well. So for these products, you would wanna wash them. You would wanna store them in a container with a tight lid. You wanna put a label on them so you know when you freeze it and they'll stay good in the freezer for about six months, but they don't require any additional preparation before they're frozen. The second method requires blanching before freezing. So blanching, if you're not familiar, it's kind of like making a soft boiled egg. You are submerging the produce in boiling water for one to three minutes, and then you're immediately putting it in ice water so that it doesn't overcook. It's lightly cooking it, and this helps to preserve the nutrients and preserve the texture before freezing them. A lot, I'd say the majority of produce um, benefits from bl being blanched before it's frozen. So carrots, asparagus, peppers, um, hard dark leafy greens like kale, really most veggies uh, benefit from being blanched before you freeze them. And then the third method, the third group of produce is things that are best fully cooked before freezing. So potatoes, apples, radishes, beans, sweet potatoes, those are all things that you would want to fully cook before freezing them. Um, so if you have some of those and they're going to go bad, you could maybe roast them, you could boil them fully, um, you could cook them on the stovetop, whatever it is that you want to do whatever you want to use them for, go ahead and do that cooking before you freeze them and they are going to stay better for longer that way. All right, so we can check out our pizzas now. You can smell them, they smell good. The cheese has melted, the sauce, the veggies are all looking pretty good, and there we go, there we have it. This came together really quickly. This is a really tasty recipe, has a decent amount of veggies on there. <clears throat> the buns are made from whole grains, and the cheese is low fat. So this is a great My Plate recipe that if you have kids, they will love. So I hope you try out this recipe at home. Thank you to everyone who tuned into our cooking demo.